the public relations team here at Henry Ford Health System. Um, I have the pleasure today of bringing to you Bob Riney, our President of Healthcare Operations and Chief Operating Officer, and Barbara Rossman. She is the President and CEO of Henry Ford Macomb Hospital. They have some really exciting news to share about a new construction project up there in Macomb County. So Bob, I'm going to turn it on over to you. And folks, okay. while it does say Michelle Fusco in Bob's um, corner, he is in fact the Bob Riney, and I will take <laughs> care of that for you, Bob, while you're speaking. <laughs> Go only ahead, you Bob. Could, on, only you could do that, Dana. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I am really pleased to be joined for this exciting announcement by Barbara Rossman, who serves as the president and CEO of Henry Ford Macomb Hospital and of the chief nursing officer for the entire Henry Ford Health System and Joey West, a member of the Patient and Family Advisory Committee at Henry Ford Macomb Hospital. Since Henry Ford Macomb Hospital became a full part of the Henry Ford Health System back in 2007, I've watched this facility and Macomb County continue to grow and flourish and become the true healthcare leader in Macomb. Today, I am thrilled to announce that the hospital is building on the preeminence for years to come and their prominence in this marketplace with a $318 million expansion and renovation. This project has been years in the making and one that will have an enduring and meaningful impact for all our patients and their families throughout Macomb County. The focal point of this expansion and renovation is a new five-story, 225,000 square foot addition with 160 private patient rooms that can be easily converted to an ICU for managing critical ill patients when necessary. We are also renovating the existing inpatient units to create more private rooms throughout the entire facility. Once completed, this project will transform the hospital campus at Macomb County's first hospital to provide all 361 of its licensed beds as private patient rooms for the safety and the convenience of patients and their loved ones. In addition, this expansion and renovation represents the largest healthcare investment in the county by a health system. We announced another first for Macomb County in 2018 when we opened the county's first hybrid operating room as part of a $37 million investment in surgical interventional and cardiac catheterization lab expansion. I know that what we are building here will be the future of medical facilities, not just for Macomb County, but for the state and quite frankly, nationally. We have put the full strength of the Henry Ford Health System behind it because we know that this investment represents everything that this community needs and wants. This is being financed, the $318 million project by Henry Ford capital funding and generous philanthropic donations. No CARES Act relief funding has been allocated for this project at all. Just a short time ago, we had a ceremonial groundbreaking outside with our leadership team, our great hospital leaders from Henry Ford Macomb, our amazing physicians and nursing staff and dignitaries. Even though it was a small ceremony, you could feel the excitement and the momentum behind this project. When we, un when we unveil the completion in 2023, we expect to do so with a much larger ceremony Macomb style. I, for one, can't wait to celebrate the completion and opening of what will be an amazing expansion and renovation. I hope you can hear the excitement in my voice because this is truly a remarkable investment in Macomb County. With that, I will turn it over to our fearless leader of the Henry Ford Macomb Hospital, Barbara Rossman. Thank you, Bob. And yes, it will be a huge party. <laughs> And thanks to you and the support that you provided through all these years since we've become part of uh, Henry Ford Health System. So I've had the privilege of serving um, Henry Ford Macomb Hospitals and with our health system for a number of years. And it's been also an unparalleled privilege to, to grow with our community as it flourishes. Today, we're building on our legacy. As Bob noted, working with our medical staff, 
we've introduced many services that community members use to have to travel outside of the area to receive care. This expansion and the renovation will transform the landscape of our campus and elevate our facility to match our superior care. Becoming a hospital with all private rooms will ensure the highest quality of care for our patients and the community, which is exactly what they deserve and have been asking for for many years. When our patients and their families come to us, it is at their most vulnerable time. Every day, we work to recognize this and strive to deliver loving, embracing care with each and every encounter. We recognize the importance of the environment and healing, and that's what we will address with this project. And because we know every patient has their own unique story, we have envisioned the future of our hospital campus to ensure that each patient and their loved ones have the best experience that meets their individualized needs. I would like to pay, to pay special thanks to our patients and their families, our physicians, our team members, whose important feedback was incorporated into the design of the new patient rooms and other parts of the project. In a minute, you'll be hearing from Joey West, a longtime friend and also a representative from our patient and family advisory committee, which contributed valuable input from the patient's perspective. I mean, it was instrumental in how we designed many of our rooms. We also consulted world-class care teams for their input as well, all with one goal in mind, to provide the best care and experience for our patients and for our families. Throughout the construction process, please keep in mind that Henry Ford Macomb will remain fully operational. We are asking our community for your patience as we move through the phases of the construction progress and to please pardon the dust outside. Uh, during the project, our patients and their families can expect the same level of high quality care and experience they've come to expect from us. With the continuing advanced care in cardiac, neuro, and other services that we have introduced, we're experiencing an increased need for intensive care, bed, uh, pay, excuse me, uh, for intensive care patient rooms. So we'll be expanding our ICU capacity from 48 to 60 rooms. From a more fundamental perspective, the increasing demand is requiring also more parking, our favorite topic always in healthcare, and road infrastructure, which is an important part of this expansion. So today, as I have the privilege of serving in a dual role, as Bob articulated, from a nursing perspective, I know the importance of great care and what it looks like, which is why quality, safety, and healing are at the heart of every decision we've made relative to this expansion, this renovation, and everything that we do every day. With that, it's my great pleasure to introduce Joey West from our Patient and Family Advisory Committee at Henry Ford Macomb Hospital. Joey? Hi, Barbara. Thank you for that introduction. I'm also a trustee in Clinton Township, and I know that the patients and the residents of Clinton Township have been asking for this for a long, long time. I truly have to say the rooms are beautiful. The, they're, they're spacious, they um, uh, allow for the, the patients to have family members there with them and which always helps their care, will always help a person get better faster. I um, also like the fact that the rooms can be converted quickly into a, um, a you know, can go from a regular room into an ICU room if they need it. And, um, and if the patient's uh, uh, stable enough to handle that. But I really think some of the things I like about the room is the fact that the person who is in that room, the loved one has an area where they can sleep, but they also can convert into a, uh, an area where they could use their computer, uh, do their studies, do their work. And so they have no real reason to leave their loved one's side. And I had my care years ago at by county which was a Henry Ford facility and unfortunately now is a Myers, but um, it was very important to me that I had my family there and that I could have my family there. So these rooms and um, what they, the whole facility will really respond to the need of the patient. Thank you, uh, Joey. And before we take questions, 
I want to thank you and the Patient and Family Advisory Committee at Henry Ford Macomb Hospital for incredible feedback throughout this journey. As patients themselves, you well know what it's like to be in a hospital, to be in unfamiliar surroundings, and the anxiety that comes with that. And it's you and your colleagues and your experiences that have been integrated into this facility and will be integrated into the build. You bring an incredibly important voice. Hospitals at the end of the day are about serving communities. So communities should have tremendous input into what works for them. So we can't thank you enough for helping really make a difference in making sure that we won't just build the greatest facility, but it'll have the amenities that will mean a lot to you and your family members. We appreciate it very much. Thank you, Bob. Okay, Bob, Barbara, and Joey, thank you so much. We'll go ahead and take questions now, folks. I'm gonna take them in the order in which I see them to the best of my ability. Um, and I do see, Karen, that you left some, uh, a, a couple questions in the chat. So Karen Buffard, if you wanna go ahead and kick things off for us, go right ahead. Yes, um, thank you. I wondered if you could um, talk a little bit about why um, the the need for intense why why the need for intensive care rooms has increased is that related to uh, the pandemic um, and now that the COVID nineteen cases have uh, decreased significantly I'm wondering if you think that the pandemic is is mostly over and um, you know we can move forward uh, on that basis. Barbara, do you want to take the first part in terms of the ICU capacity? I'd be happy to. Uh, really, thank you for that question. I, I appreciate it. I think it's an important question. What we're finding um, with hospitalized care particularly is that the patients that we're caring for, even outside of COVID, are much more acutely ill. More and more of our patients are being cared for in the ambulatory settings. Clearly, that's goal. That's the goal, is to keep people in their homes as close to home as possible. As it relates to hospitalized care specifically, the intensity and acuity of our patients is increasing along with the continuing uh, advancement of the programs that we're offering here. So as we've advanced our cardiovascular and thoracic services, our cancer capabilities, our neuroscience capabilities, uh, we are seeing more intensity in patients. In addition, the general medicine types of patients that are kept in the hospital now are much more acutely ill. Uh, the, those that are less so are kept are managed through their primary care physicians' offices and or in ambulatory settings. So that's why we know the demand for critical care beds. We already um, get tight with the 48 critical care beds that we have. So this expansion to 60 in this project and our ability, as Joey suggested and, and Bob mentioned also, uh, gives us that opportunity as acuity continues to advance, we can convert any of these rooms now to critical care as need on a needs based. Um, thank you, Barbara. And as far as the second part of your question relative to uh, COVID, there's no question that we are all experiencing and enjoying a significant reduction in um, COVID activity, both inpatient and in just general positivity from a testing perspective. Um, and it's, I think, tremendously um, related to the vaccination success that we have had overall. And so we are very grateful for those in the community that have partnered with us on the vaccination journey. Having said that, we also know that viruses circulate, they cycle. We still don't know everything that we would like to know about this particular virus. And we do know that we're enjoying outdoor activities now, which is much healthier in general and um, reduces the spread of virus versus indoor activities. So our caution is about the fall when we resume indoor activities, if we don't get the vaccination rates higher. The best way to ensure that we have a continuity of what we're really enjoying now uh, is to make sure that we get the vast majority of our citizens vaccinated because a virus can't move around vaccinated employee, uh, vaccinated uh, uh, community members. So, um, you know, we're, we're pleased with where we're at and we're pleased that uh, both employers and um, state officials are continuing to push and encourage and incentivize vaccination. 
Thank you, Bob. Um, Sandra, I see you have a, a question um, about the, the CARES Act. Let's let's see if Mr. Bob Riney can, can answer that question. If not, we will get you the answer. But um, Sandra, go ahead and open your mic and ask that question. Um, and any you might have related to the Macomb Project, please. Okay, Bob, it looks like Sandra is asking, um, it says you mentioned you weren't using, we're not using funds from the CARES Act. Um, she wants to know how much money Henry Ford received from that and what it is being used for. So without it in front of me, the last thing I would want to do is misquote uh, a number. We have publicly reported it in the past. So Tina, to your point, we're happy to share that information. Uh, my main point today was um, letting you know that um, this expansion is because we've earned it through um, our ability to uh, manage uh, our portfolio and we have generous community members that really believe in this institution and in Henry Ford Macomb Hospital who are stepping up to help fund it. So we're, uh, we're doing it the old fashioned way. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. And I think that also to that point, you know, this is a project that has been in the works um, since long before the pandemic, and it's because of the needs that we saw in the community. And I understand part of that is a growing population and an aging population as well. Do either you or Barbara or maybe Joy as a public servant want to speak to that point? Barbara, you know this community sure. uh, intimately. <laughs> Well, as we all know, Macomb County is one of the fastest growing counties in Michigan. And also we have a growing aging population um, in Macomb County, 65 and older. I hate to, I hate to say 65 and older is an aging population. <laughs> um, so we'll go 90 and older. Um, but what we find with that also the demand for uh, services associated with just any of us aging are there. We also know that we have a population that has a lot of comorbidities, um, such as obesity, hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, things often associated uh, with the way that we care for ourselves. And those are many of the patients now that we're seeing in, in our hospitals and health settings and that increase the demand in addition to the growth of population that is coming into Macomb County. You know, if we think about what Mark Hackle says, his slogan is, let's make Macomb our home. And we're privileged to be able to be part of that, making Macomb our home uh, sentiment with what we've been able to accomplish as Henry Ford Health System and Henry Ford Macomb within our community, growing with the community. Thank you, Barbara. Joy, would you like to speak as a public servant to um, the commitment of Henry Ford to the community and how that makes um, Macomb County, Clinton Township, a better place to live and work um, and make their home, make one's home. Um, yes, I, I would. I uh, worked many years ago at Henry Ford and I worked closely with Barbara to be able to get Dalcoma to go from the, um, from Hall Road to uh, 19 Mile. Because before that, they had to come down either uh, uh, Garfield or Hayes, and that just made it going into the ER worse. I mean, it made it, it the, the road was bad. I mean, there were so many things with it. And I know that Henry Ford was instrumental in getting that road done. That is a commitment right there to your community, without a doubt. They also were very, um, uh, they were big with the 19 mile project, which was getting that, um, that road paved, repaved, and um, they made some monetary donations to that too. Henry Ford has done a great job in, in Clinton Township. It hires a lot of people. It, um, it's, in fact, actually years ago, it hired my daughter and now she's over at Henry Ford West Bloomfield as the, and just found out she's the supervisor of radiation therapy. Yes, yes, yay! So I am very impressed with the hospital and I'm glad it's part of our community. I have to I, jump in here, Dana. Uh, oh, please do. Just tag on to what uh, Joey said. Uh, we lovingly call Dalcoma, its official name, uh, Bob Riney Boulevard, because Bob made it happen. It's one of the first things that occurred when we became Henry Ford Health System. 
I will never ever forget that. <laughs> Uh, point of personal privilege that just reminded me I need to make an appointment for my mammogram. So I'm going to call your daughter, Joy, just FYI. Oh, oh, okay. Bloomfield is closest to me. Um, okay. Important reminder for everybody, right? I think I can say that. We do have a question in the chat, folks, um, about the rooms. So can you clarify for us? We are um, making all rooms private, but we aren't adding beds, correct? So can, can somebody clarify that for us, please, Barbara? Yes, I'm happy to clarify that. And I appreciate the question. Um, so every room, right, we have 361 licensed beds on the Clinton Township campus. And that is the campus that is going through the uh, building of the new tower and then the renovation of the existing central tower. Not all of those rooms are private rooms. We've got about 60% semi-private, about 40% are private. With the completion of this project, both phases of the project, we will, we will have all 361 private rooms. Very good, thank you so much. Folks, we're gonna wrap this up in about seven minutes, if not sooner. So if you have questions, go ahead and raise your hand and put them in the, or put them in the chat for me. I do have another thing that, I, that I'd love to hear a little bit more about. And so we know that a private patient room is comfortable for both the patient and the family, but there's a medical reason for that too. And Barbara, maybe you can expand on that for us. No, I love the question, thank you. <laughs> Uh, research actually substantiates that private rooms create an increasingly safe and healing environment. Uh, it creates the privacy that patients and their families need. Um, it buffers sound from the exterior corridor. Semi-private rooms, it's very difficult to do that because oftentimes depending on how the division is in a semi-private room, whether it be a curtain or some kind of a thin a walled barrier, you can hear no matter how you try to create the privacy, it's very difficult. I think most of the, some of the, in addition to the healing environment, we know also that it, um, create, it reduces infections. There's substance, there is substantive research showing that uh, infection rates go down with private rooms. And I think even in our health system, we're seeing that with our organizations. I know that we are that have all private rooms, we've seen lowered infection rates, uh, cross-contamination that sometimes occurs in hospitals unintentionally, but it occurs. Um, so those are some of the reasons. It's, it's, a, it's a tremendous patient family satisfier mm -hmm. and it creates such a loving healing environment, really magnifying that body, mind and spirit healing that we can get from hospitalized care for those that need it. Very good, thank you so much. The final question that I'm seeing is when will this work start and when will it be completed? I think and I can answer that, but correct me if I'm wrong. Work has already started just uh, in March, correct, Barbara? Yeah. Okay, very good. And we're looking at a 2023 completion date, am I correct? Am I remembering my, no, my facts correctly? For the completion of the North Tower. Okay, so if you could clarify that a little bit for us. So the North Tower, we anticipate completion. And as um, Denise mentioned earlier, um, it, we, we appear to be a little ahead of time. We'll knock on wood and uh, working to be under budget. <laughs> as Bob made comments earlier today with our groundbreaking, we always strive to exceed expectations, Bob. Um, and then coming, we need to, once we move our first patient into the North Tower, uh, we'll begin uh, construction in the central tower a unit at a time. That's the existing building to get to the all private rooms in the central tower. We anticipate that portion of the project to be completed probably in the summer of 2024. Thank you so much. Okay, folks, um, if not seeing any more questions, we'll go ahead and wrap things up. Any closing words from anybody? If not, that's okay. Thank you all for joining us. <laughs> Thanks, Bob. And I look, I look forward to driving down your boulevard next time I go to Macomb <laughs> County. It's got to be known for something. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. If you have any follow-up questions, please uh, reach out to Dave Olajars. His email address is on the press release that you should have received in your emails recently, um, or you could reach out to me as well. Um, happy to help where we can. Everybody have a great afternoon. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.